But today I'm going to do part two of practice these things. Practice these things. First Corinthians 11 verse 1 says, uh, Paul says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. What you have learned, he says in Philippians, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And here's what will happen if you do, and the God of peace will be with you. So Paul understood, and I'm really drumming and drilling this in here, because I, I want you to get it, not just here, but here. And Paul understood you become what you practice. Remember, uh, Proverbs tells us, in all your ways, acknowledge him, acknowledge God. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. And that's important to understand, because if you don't acknowledge him in all of your ways, if you don't acknowledge him, and we've talked about this, whatever you do acknowledge, well, that will direct your path. So you acknowledge fear in your life, fear will direct your path. Fear will influence your decisions, your choices, your thinking, what you do or don't do because whatever you acknowledge directs your path. You become what you practice. So the, the wisdom writer, the writer of Proverbs, tells us we must trust in the Lord with all of our heart and not lean on our own understanding because his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. In all your ways, acknowledge him, his word, his way, and he shall direct your paths. And then remember, he says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. And here's what that will do. This will bring health, health to your body and nourishment to your bones. So fear is getting you down. Fear is gripping your life. Maybe that's your natural response to any kind of situation. And that's like your, your habit. That I, I just, I'm just fear, fearful. You're going to change that today. Yeah. You're going to say, no, that's, that's, not, that's not what I'm going to practice. That may have been how I lived before, but I'm going to live, I'm going to practice something different. I'm, I, I'm going to choose today to acknowledge him. Come on, somebody. I'm going to acknowledge him in all of my ways that he would make my path straight, that he would direct my path. And I can acknowledge him because his word says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. And I'm going to acknowledge that in my life. So whenever I feel fear, whenever I, that natural response is there, that automatic, remember habits are like automatic, I'm going to practice something different. For you haven't given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I'm going to acknowledge that, I'm going to practice that. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me, I'm going to acknowledge you because, because you are able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to your power that works in us. I love how the King James, that takes it up a notch, says that same passage, Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him who is able to do, you can't do it, he can. Now unto him who is able to do what, listen, exceeding, I love these words, abundantly, like next level, above, exceeding abundantly, Above, all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He worketh in you. And so you, you say, I, I'm going to practice that. I'm going to live out that. Because I understand, Proverbs 23, verse 7, For as he thinks, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I'm asking you today, what do you think? What do you think? For you become what you practice. And Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Understand, to follow, to follow Jesus is to follow the way of Jesus. The practices of Jesus. Following Jesus, we, we, we understand, it's not just about belief alone, right? It's not just about, well, I believe that. Well, so does the devil. 
It's not just about what I believe. It's not just about belief alone. No, it's, about, it's also about living in a certain way. Now, I said last week that I'm partway through a course at the moment on the Theosu, uh, theology app called How to Become a Modern Day Monk. And we learned that monks are ones that, what? They dedicate their lives to one single purpose. That's where the name comes from, monk, monos, one single. So monks have one single focus. That's, that's where the whole concept of monasticism, mono, single one, comes from. It's a single way, a single focus for their life. They, and, and what is that single focus? Well, they dedicate their life to the way of Jesus. Because it's a good way. There's plenty of other ways that will destroy your life. Yeah. So their desire is to be like Christ, not just in faith. Oh, yeah, I believe that. But in practice. Yeah. Like it should change their life, the way they do life, the way they talk, the way they speak, the way they think, the way they process. Their desire is to be like Christ in faith and practice because they understand you become what you practice. I'm drilling it in. And of course, how to be a modern day monk is designed, of course, to challenge the, the listener to consider the introduction of focused biblical practice into our insanely chaotic, bustling and busy, digitally distracted lives. Why? I'll tell you. For our betterment. For our betterment. Not just for our betterment, uh, uh, for our benefit. When we live this way, when we, we, when we apply this, it is for our betterment, for our health. It's to nourish those bones. It's for our benefit. People out there in the world, what's the key? What's the secret to success? Here's some. Practice these things, these ancient ways. So we're going to ask, what did, what did Jesus practice? What, what, what did you, if we're to follow this way, what did Jesus practice? What is it that Paul did when he encouraged others to follow his example as he followed the example of Christ? What is it that he has says, what you've seen, you've learned, you've received, you've heard from me? Do it. Follow me as I follow Christ. Practice these things, he said. Well, what did he practice? What did he, what did he do? What did Jesus practice? What did Paul imitate of Christ that we should practice? Now, I think when we're talking about practice here, you've got to understand how important this is. And I want to give you some, some context that I think will help you today. These passages where, where Paul is saying, imitate what you've seen, heard, received, and so on. Do it. Practice it. Understand when Paul wrote this epistle, this, this letter to the churches, you've got to understand there was no New Testament. Yet, there was no New Testament. In the, in the first century, there was, they, they did not have the New Testament. They did not have version app. It was not there. The New Testament was written over the first period of the Roman church, and, and, it, and it wasn't even brought together or codified for many, 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 many years. And so there was no verse, you know, sometimes I'll speak and I'll, 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 I'll be talking because that, this is what speakers do. So you go, go and blah, 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 Acts chapter 4, verse 9. And then blah, 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 Matthew 5, verse 10. And then blah, 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 Titus 2, verse 3. And we're always referring back to this because we have it. You've got to realize how privileged you are. To be able to have the very word of God. Not just one version, you've got like 50 versions on your phone. But back then, they did not have access to that. So, 
So, so how did they learn? By practicing. How did they learn? By tradition. They would watch, watch what I do, see how I live. See, see how I, and, and do it. Because they had no access like we have. Uh, we, we, we are the most educated. St- yeah, I'm not going to say, don't go there. Okay. We have the resources. They, had, they, they did not have it. So that, the, all they had was practice and tradition. Practice and tradition. Follow the tradition. Follow the ways of the church fathers. They, they did this, we do that. We see this, we do that. Uh, Paul actually talks about the fact, uh, he, he says this. Because in that same scripture where he says, all scripture is God breathed, he wasn't speaking about the New Testament. He's talking about the Old Testament. But just before that, he says, know of whom you've learned these things. Because some of us are learning off TikTok from some random guy. We don't even know who they are. He's like, know me. Know me. See how I live. Watch me over the long term. Not some, hi, I'm an influencer. Go away. It's annoying. It's like, see how I live. That's why community is so important. That's why living life in community is so important. Because I can see you. And you get to see the real you with all, all, your, all your faults. Not you guys, but the other servants. <laughs> all your faults and your problems. And, we, and we're still going to love each other. And, it's, and, and we see each other's mess and yucky stuff. And <laughs> there was no Philippians, no Ephesians, no First and Second Timothy. So understand practice and tradition, that's what they had. That was, that was essentially the means that, that they used as, as the way to, to communicate, to pass on, to teach through. It, it was how the, how the early church fathers showed the way. And truth is actually, people didn't even have Bibles they could use for themselves. Like, like what you have, you know, you just, well, yeah, I got a Bible. Some of you got like 10 Bibles. You know, it's not like, it's like we're, we're, that, that, that only was possible like about 600 years ago. And the Reformation and in the, uh, when, when the printing press, that's why the printing press is the most significant invention ever. What was the first book printed? The Bible. That's why it's like number one in the top one things in the last thousand years or something. That's how amazing it is. And we just like, oh yeah, what's going on? Stop it. It's actually amazing. Before, the, uh, b- b- before, before that, even though there was Bibles out there, they were only in the church. You couldn't, you couldn't, they, they were so expensive to make that they could only be in churches and maybe only in cathedrals for many places. So how did the church, uh, through, through practice and tradition. Yeah. Through practice and tradition, do these things. Things and we can make fun of it, but that's why they did these things because there was no other way to get to know. And, and this is for my reformed friends who talk about sola scriptura and all this. You, you, that they have to understand that there was no sola scriptura, and so when they minimized the traditions and the practices of the church and make fun of it. What they need to understand is that, that that's how the early church functioned. And even though they had the Old Testament, the Old Testament was not available to the people. Jesus, remember, went to the synagogue and they opened the scroll to the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because that's the only place. They did not have access to it. And so when I tell you, you got, what have I got to be thankful about? The fact that you've got 50 Bibles sitting on your phone. The Word of God is right there for you. Even in my daily reading today, Josiah, King of, uh, uh, Je- I think it's Josiah, but they, they, they found the Word of God in the temple when he was rebuilding it. It had been lost. And they found it and located it again, and they opened it up, and they read the scroll, and they're like, we are far away from God. And they read the scroll, and the people repented and came back because all they had was tradition and the practices. We have the very word of God in our hands on our phones. 
Can you imagine carrying those paper Bibles around that you have on your phone? Yeah, I brought the van to church today. <laughs> so imitating the practice, keep a tradition. That was, ha- that was the way. That was the, 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 the way that they could, they could help people live this new, this new life. And so Paul's like, see the way I live. See what I put into practice. Know of whom you've learned these things. You watch my, you know me. I don't know about, I don't know that TikToker. I know you. I see you. So what did Jesus practice? I hope that, I hope that makes, brings clarity why this is so important. So what did Jesus practice? Well, they, were, they weren't complex things. Let me give a, I'll give you three things. There's so many, but I'll just give you three today. Number one, he practiced prayer. Prayer. Yo, what's the big deal? Well, some of you don't practice it. Luke chapter five, verse 16. But Jesus often, everybody say often. Often Often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. He often did that. Mark 1, 35, very early in the morning. And he prayed in the morning. Well, I just want to pray. We don't know. I, I, I think it's a good idea to pray in the morning. Jesus did. That was his practice. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left the house. Listen, if you don't put him first, you won't put him anywhere. Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. This is what monks practice. Luke 6, verse 12, one of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night, all night prayer meeting, night praying to God. And again, this is why I use the word practice rather than discipline. Sometimes you say, well, I've got to get the spiritual. It feels like you feel like a naughty child. Well, I'm just, can't keep the disciplines. No, practice. Keep the practices. Keep the practices, the way of Jesus. It's like, oh man, I missed yesterday. It doesn't matter. So you're practicing. This is a long-term game here, plotology. You're practicing, practicing, practicing. I'm learning. So, so, so practice has slowly become a way of life. It becomes the way in which you live. It just becomes second nature. So I, I, I practice these things and it'll change you. Not overnight. Maybe not after a week. Not after a month. Maybe not after a year. But you, suddenly you'll go, you are different. Because you practice and you become what you practice. Well, I can, hallelujah. So they practice prayer. Second, second thing. Jesus practiced. He was regular at a synagogue. You just say church. He went regularly to synagogue. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. What's a custom? A custom is, it really describes one's normative practice. This was, this was something that Jesus practiced. And of course, there's that verse in Hebrews, which every pastor throws out every now and then. Don't play till I say, yeah, okay. Got three hours left. No, so, so, so. That was a nervous laugh. But there's that passage in Hebrew. Every pastor quotes it from time to time, put the pressure on. You know that, let us not neglect, Hebrews 10 verse 25, you know it. Let us not neglect meeting together as some in the 9 a.m. No, as some have made a habit. It's a bad habit too. For some, that's become a habit. Oh, Pastor, I'm really regular. You know me, Pastor, I'm really regular. I come every Christmas. Oh. See with the big guy. Come every Christmas. Of course, we get other people. Oh, that's not me, Pastor. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, ter- I'm regular. I come, come once every two months. Stop it. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. <laughs> you know, it's that old thing, you know, the wife's banging on the door. Come on, we're going to go to church. I don't want to go to church. Come on, we're going to go to church. Why do I have to go to church? Because you're the pastor. <laughs> I've all been there. I've all been there. I've all been there. 
I've been there. I know. <laughs> Come on, church. Turn up. That's Anita. I'm always uh, organized. So. She's away. Sorry, dear. <coughs> Sorry about the ticket also. So. I want to challenge you today. I'm Pastor Adam. I love you. I'm trying to help you. This will benefit you. This will help you in your life. But not coming to church because you don't feel like it. It's just a cop out. And I want to say it can easily become a habit. Yeah. And a bad habit. Going to church whether you feel like it or not should be your practice. Yeah. That should be your practice. Not for my benefit. It's for yours. Pastor Adam, I love you. I'm trying to help you. Now listen, Christian parents. It's going to get awkward in here for a minute. Your kids will become what you practice. Let's just let that soak in and marinate. Your kids will become what you practice. You don't, they won't. You don't come, you don't make it a priority, they won't. Parents come and say, oh, well, I'm so worried about my kids. They don't say, uh, like, well, 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 you hardly come. Is this too awkward? Is that, uh, that's, it's just, it's, I'm, I'm just trying to, I think it's how I'm saying it. You, 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 you don't go to church regular? Don't be surprised when they get older, like father, like son. Hello. Now, they may choose. You might be regular every week, and they may choose not to. That's different. That's their choice. But you're not creating an environment for that. I, I want to say to you today, every parent here, hear, hear my voice. Don't get offended. You need to religiously go to church. Rain. That was some rain. Hail or shine. That should be your custom. That should be your practice. Practice these things. Well, we're talking to the kids, and the kids don't want to go. Who cares? Johnny, do you want to go to church? No, I don't want to go. To I want to play with Lego. Okay. Stop it. Who's the parent here? You're in charge of the kid, not the kid in charge of you. you the kid doesn't know what they're doing. What do you want for dinner? Oh, I better not go this show. I know it's, it's like, <laughs> here's your dinner. So my father, I was to some of the guys out there, it's like, yeah, eat one. I said to my father, when he, he did that when we were younger, right? I, I think I've shared it, you know, and he made this dinner. It was burnt. It was a burnt offering. The, the, it's just burnt. And we're like, oh, we don't want to eat this. We don't want to eat chops or something. He's like, we don't want to eat this. So he didn't want to eat it. So he took it, he opened the window of our house, took the meals, the plate and everything, and threw them out the window. <laughs> we always ate better after that. It was just something fixed. Oh, the good old days. What the heck are you asking your kids? Do you want to go to church? Listen, back in the old days, our services... You know, an hour, 10 minutes. You know, some people, some services used to go for like three hours and all the kids are under the seats and it never affected anyone. <laughs> you grew up in church. You slept under the, under the pews and, you, and that's what you did. Yeah. Do you want to go to church? No, I don't want to go to church. Well, I'll tell you what, you're going to church because that's what we're going to do because as for, listen, Johnny, you've got to understand, we love Jesus. We're going to seek him first. Yeah. We're going to seek the kingdom of God first. And so therefore, in this house, when you're older, you do what you want. But right now, this is, this is what we do as a family. Because for, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So you might not want to. But not only that, you're going to come with a happy heart. And you're going to get that attitude right. And you're going to sort that flipping out. And everybody said, Amen. <laughs> come on, give Jesus a mic. <laughs> that's not in my notes. So that's given for free. So, anyway, hallelujah.
See, the church is not just a place. It's a body, right? It's a body. You are the body of Christ, Paul said. Each one of you. It's not just a place to go, I don't want to. No, it's a place. It's a body. We need to be together. Each of you is a, is a part of it. Minister, author uh, Stephen A. Gammon said, put it like this, the church is not merely an organization we join or a place of worship we go to when convenient. Church is the body of Christ. We need to understand that. Jesus practiced that, and you become what you practice. Your kids will become what you practice. And our desire is that when they are older, they will not depart from it. Number three, third thing they practice. Nearly done, nearly done. Uh, Practice contentment. Paul practiced contentment. Here's something Paul practiced. I've learned the secret of to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And we've talked about this in a previous message about thankfulness. If you want to become a thankful person, practice thankfulness. Thessalonians, give thanks in all circumstances. Stances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And contentment is the same kind of thing. You, you want to be a content person? You, you, you practice contentment. I was traveling with a pastor. Uh, uh, you know, he's a well-known pastor. I was speaking at his church a while back. And we, we, as we were traveling, we were going to the airport. I was flying home after speaking. And I said to him, I don't, didn't really know him well, but I was speaking to him. And I said, well, where, when you travel and you speak, because he goes, travels all over the World and I was like, where do you stay? Do you stay at people's homes? Or do you just stay there because sometimes it can be awkward. And you know, we're just talking about what what do you like to do? He's like, no, I'll stay wherever, wherever people put me. I thought, oh, that's that's interesting. Just wherever. He's like, yeah, absolutely, wherever. And then he told me the story. He said he he travelled with a well-known pastor who, if I said his name, you'd probably know him. And um, it's from many years ago, many years ago. And he'd go from church and he'd travel with him. And, 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 you know, speak to, to America, and he'd speak in these massive mega churches in the States, and it was like re- really cool to be a part of. He, he was like, I really enjoyed it. So he said, But we arrived in one town, and in that town, I, I, they, they put us in a hotel. We drove to the hotel, and as we went, as we got on, we realized this is a dump. Like it was the hotel from hell, right? And so it was just like, so we go in, and it's just, it was called Rose something, and it was just, it was just filthy. It was like, you know, kind of, you know, the picture he built was like rat and fist. I mean, it was just, it was just bad. It was bad. So he was like, I was saying to the pastor guy, oh, man, this is the I'm so mad. He was not content. So he's going, how could they put us on? No, no, this is so tough. And where they go to this is disgusting, this place. After about an hour, there was a knock on the door. Open the door, the pastor's there. He's like, I am so sorry. Look, my PA is new. She found this hotel. I told her to put you in the six-star thing over here, but she got this mixed up, and she's put you <laughs> in this, this dive. He's like, we're meant to be over at the other six-star hotel over there. So he's like, so, so pick up your things, and, and let's go over to that hotel. I'll take care of this. <coughs> and the pastor who this guy was traveling with said, yep, I'll pack up my things, but he... Him, he's staying here. He's staying here till he gets his attitude sorted out. Do you know he's been content ever since that uh, uh, moment? He's never had a moment. So he, when he says wherever, that was a discipleship moment right there. Come on. Awkward, very awkward. <laughs> but he changed that. I'm going to be content. I'm going to practice contentment. doesn't matter where I stay. I'm always going to be grateful. Don't teach us too many lessons like that, Lord, but it's... But it is what it is. I heard this quote from Winston Churchill. You can play something beautiful. (laughs) Nearly done. Is that a woof or it's nearly finished or no? (laughs) Sorry, I couldn't couldn't help it. (laughs) I'm terrible. So hear this quote. I can see Anita going, dear, stop it. I hear this quote quote from Winston Churchill because he was an optimist, right? And he's like, why be anything else? And he, said, he practiced optimism, but, and he said this, the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. The optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. Be that guy. Whatever you acknowledge will direct your path. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. I'm trying to encourage you today. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path, for you become what you practice. As I close today, the reality is there are so many 
principles and practices we can apply to our lives from from scripture i mean i said last week the fruit of the spirit think about that right the, 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 the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace practice peace pra- practice f- f- um, forbearance which, which is patience patience how, how many need a little bit more patience uh, come on liars come on we need a, we, we we need a little bit more patience. <laughs> lying is a sin too come on somebody but, but, but we, we need a bit more patience. How, what about practicing kindness? You know, sometimes we look at the gifts of the Spirit and we go, oh my God, you're so full of them. God. We don't go, man, you are just so full of patience. You're so full of self-control. Friends, that's an evidence of the Holy Ghost at work. You're so, you're so, you're able to control yourself. Because because what's the point of having spiritual gifts? You know, man, he moves powerfully, you know. He's got the gift of tongues, but he gossips in English. Come on. We, we need these practices in our, we need these practices in our lives. So many principles and practices we can apply to our lives. Things like, things like, think about it, like fasting. Fasting's a thing now, like there's apps and like the, the world is understanding these ancient ways. Fasting is, it works. And so you can go intermittent fasting. There are people here I know who are doing the fasting diet. They're fasting because fasting is good for your health and for your well-being and for your mental health because, because people are realizing these ancient ways will b- benefit you. They will bring health to you. They will nourish your bones. They will change your life if you'll just apply them. So fasting is a thing. Jesus said, it's not, it's not if you fast, it's when you fast. It will benefit your life, your health, improve your mental, physical well-being, nourish your bones. Psalm 103 says, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all His benefits. There is benefits to following these ancient ways. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. In the Living Translation, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying, a quality of life. Not talking about money. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Another version, Amplify, came that they may have life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Friends, again, who would not want to, if we can live this out, who would not want to follow Christ? Because I need that. Christ was such a light. When they began these practices in the Roman Empire, it was such a light to draw people to. It's like, I want that. I want, I, I see love, patience, kindness, goodness, general. I see all of these things are working in you, and I want that. It's not like, oh, I'm just a Christian, and I just lost sucking. I'm a living sucking. And I stop it. Life should flow out of us. Yeah. Oh, I better stop. So I said, yeah. Like I said last week, if we're to build an abundant life, if we're to build an abundant life, and I'm speaking, listen, to every business person, to every marketplace minister, to every parent, to every person with a dream in their heart, if you want to build a successful, abundant, overflowing, robust, rich, and fulfilling life, not just a spiritual life, all life, if you want to develop margin, resilience, strength, and mental fortitude, have peace into your crazy, sometimes chaotic life, Consider becoming a modern-day monk and practice these things. Start today. If you fail, tomorrow doesn't matter. Just get up and keep going. Keep practicing and and, and so until it becomes second nature. Practice these things. For you become what you practice. Oh, I hope that's helped somebody today. Would you stand? Let me bless you, beautiful people. Would you stretch your hands out? And let me speak these ancient words of Scripture over you and your family. May the God of hope fill you, fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him. So that you may overflow with hope. Let that be our story. That you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you and your family and your children and your children's children shalom, peace. We receive that today. We live it today. Practice these things. Give some praise to Jesus. Turn to the person next to you and go, I just need to live this now. I just need to live this. So go and fellowship. Go and fellowship. Go and talk about it. And let's begin to live it and apply it in our lives this week. The service is over. God bless you.